I'm uh, very privileged to be joined by Monique Morrow today, who has supported uh, my podcast for the last few years. And we've, we've, we've done a few interviews where we've talked about AI, we've talked about ethics, we've talked about all sorts of things. So thank you uh, once again, Monique, for, for joining me. I greatly appreciate you and, and your time. It's a pleasure to be here, Nathaniel. And, and, and actually, you mentioned all the topics that kind of go together, right? Uh, uh, amazingly so, and even more important uh, now uh, more than ever. So uh, you absolutely have a platform that creates these conversations that need to count for, for the community. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you joining me, like I say. And I mean, I think it's particularly timely, as you sort of said to me the other day when we when we put this meeting in, probably two two or three weeks ago now. And it's uh, it's an interesting time right now with with all the sort of pandemonium caused by ChatGPT and and the people who are panicking around AI and jobs and and their jobs and everyone else's jobs. And you know, there's a lot of research around all of that stuff, and there's a lot of panic. But I don't think I don't think people need to panic necessarily. Do you agree, or, or do you think that there is a need to worry well, about this? You know, the, the, the lines are a little bit blurred, uh, Nathaniel. I think uh, because of so much um, dystopian types of uh, background that people have with regards, a, a misunderstanding with regard to the uh, to AI and the sets of AI, and especially if you talk about chat So, um, um, with jobs, you know that what you can imagine is new jobs will be created, new new kinds of careers will be uh, made. But let's be very clear, um, you know, the thing of it is is that when you're creating these types of technologies, it, you have to create with an intent in mind, in my opinion, this is my opinion. What are you doing? What are you trying to, uh, what's the problem you're trying to solve here? Uh, and what is, the, what is the, where does the human fit in all of the loop in these discussions, right? So one of the fears that people have, uh, because remember, I come also from a contextual and ethics background, uh, is um, will you lose the ability to think and to debate? Um, so, for example, universities are very concerned, and I, I, I see this uh, in terms of the students being able to take text from ChatGPT and then be able to you know, copy it in, and et cetera. And so, those are the, the, that's the thing is how, will you be able to think uh, and will you be able to debate cogently, right? So, that's one area to, to uh, be cognizant of. And I think it's also about um, more that I think the other component of it is that uh, to be able to keep in mind, you know, what is the what are the broad uh, implications for society as a whole. And I think in those terms, uh, uh, for me, these technologies have to, especially with AI, have to have an intent. And who, which organizations are actually create, kind of trying to benefit from it, right? Are they uh, typical companies? Um, are, as we as you see, I'm not going to mention these companies. Um, and if so, is that does that create a kind of a, another debate, right? Uh, you know uh, about uh, who, uh, which companies or, or even nation states want to own or have, be able to have uh, a leadership in this space. And you can see that uh, certain nation states are absolutely looking in this in this area and, and have put it in their uh, in their uh, you know strategy plan. So. It's, I know it's a big, broad answer. Uh, so, is there a concern? Is there a need to be con uh, concerned? I think it's a need to be aware. Uh, is more important. Is the awareness here? Is to be able to uh, pose the questions when somebody is looking at. I mean, you know, looking at uh, the implications of these technologies for me. So, an example could be what you're seeing is could be an intersection to education and AI. So you can have. W w you can have the study of computer science and perhaps law. So you create new new kinds of uh, disciplines, uh, AI lawyers. Uh, I know uh, a group of uh, AI lawyers uh, who actually are in this space and especially where I live. Uh, metaverse is another topic. It's, it's not directly uh, related to what we're discussing today, but you can imagine metaverse lawyers and metaverse law. So, and then if you have robotics, and then you kind of kind of you know, paint the pictures further and further out. Uh, people said robots are going to take our, our job. Well, robots are taking repetitive. I mean, why do you need repetitive jobs, right? Repetitive net, not repetitive net. It's it's an area where it sort of un, unleashes you to do other things, right? 
and but on the condition that you're able to switch to those new things and be allowed to do that that's the fear it's like, am i allowed to do this i do this so well am i allowed to do this without being thrown out the door from a company or an organization and so i think that that's what we have to to think about and um you know when you're thinking of generative generative uh, generative rate of uh, AI, particularly in the form of Jet GPT as an example, you have to think about well, what is it learning? How, what where can it get it wrong? I mean, it, it has, you know where where it, it can have this kind of a feedback that well, it seems to sound nice. It seems that wow, this is really un this is really good stuff. But uh, then you have to look at where where can it go wrong? I can, it can go wrong in terms of areas of, uh, think about uh, elections that are forthcoming. I, I, could, uh, I could actually take a picture of you, and, and this is happening already, and using census AI, um, and uh, actually have uh, uh, mis, uh, misinformation about you. And you have right. no recourse. Who owns that? Who, you have no recourse. What does the digital justice button look like? There is none, right? So the genie is out of the hat. Uh, to some extent, we have to uh, embrace facets of it with an understanding that we have to know what the implications are to us and the implications to society, and there, you know, what does ethics look like in the face of libel? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I saw that picture the other day of the Pope yep. with, 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 you know, with his white uh, white puffer jacket on, looking like a kind of hip kind of gangster with his cross and stuff, and. <laughs> But, but then there was a picture of Obama with, with Merkel that I think was probably also created. Maybe that was Photoshop. But it's like these deep fakes uh, can be created so quickly now. If, mm -hmm. if there are more than two pictures of, of someone, I believe, these can be created very quickly. And that's the same for, you know, uh, voices as well. So then there's obviously the video side of things and, and all of these potential negatives. But also, I've been looking into kind of, Thinking deeply around this stuff, and, and this is this is what one of my one of my um, other guests, um, uh, Stephen J. Manning, he said. Well, you know, people people need to actually think, and and this is yep. and this is what the challenge is, is is when when young people are actually or or overworked people are letting the AI run away with itself, then they're not doing they're not doing what they should be doing, which is which is fact checking. Which is reading it through to make sure that it actually makes makes tangible sense to people, and and making sure that that they're using their brains. And this is this is what you know we've been we've been promised these sorts of technologies for so long. I mean, we were promised chatbots that actually were really good. We were promised those. I don't know, maybe fifteen years ago, certainly ten yeah. years ago. I remember talking talking to people about this, and everyone was really hyped and they were really pumped. And 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 then what happened? Like the chatbots never arrived as they promised. But now I think we're at a place where I can see I can see the Chat GPT and whatever other chats being being integrated into all sorts of different things. I, I'm just looking into WordPress and how I can integrate a nice chatbot to go through all the podcasts and all the content that I have and suggest pieces of content. And I'm looking into that. I'm not going to rush by implementing something that that isn't going to work very well. But I think it's quite exciting as a, as a, as a way of, of also helping people to get better at, at what they're doing. Because if you're using something that's better than you at writing, you are going to get better at writing naturally. There's a progression on you, or if you pay attention, right? Yeah, you know, I, and I think it's to the point of being able to think, uh, and to, to the earlier you know, example, is to be able to think. And, and uh, yeah, I mean to uh, to be able to use these tools. You and so let's look at the positive. Let's let's kind of switch the gears a little bit. So to be able to use these tools to um, to what a benefit that it, you see it. You know, maybe it is better writing. Maybe it is better. Uh, maybe it is better reading. Maybe it's better uh, thinking about. Oh, how would I? I think somebody had actually uh, said, look, I've got this amount of money, and I want to. Don't know the specific example. Uh, but I want to create a business out of it, um, and kind of uh, you know, have this chat box, uh, chat box, uh, chat GPT interaction, and there, there it was. You know, there was a sort of crowdsourcing. There was this, well, this is your business plan. 
And I think that that's that's kind of the positive for that. Uh, also looking at, you know, could we imagine taking a step further? Could we imagine what precision medicine could be uh, with AI overall? Let's move ChatGPT uh, aside, but AI overall precision medicine. Uh, you know, uh, what does it mean for physicians and patients together to be part of that physician medicine and, and, and look at how AI can can actually uh, be used in these um, these particular examples. And I think it's, that, I think, is uh, quite interesting and promising in, in itself. Uh, we just don't want to use it. I, I think it's just a, it's as a crutch. Crutch, you know, it's like I've got a laptop. I've got, you know, you've got all of these uh, technical de technology devices and you're tethered. But you're tethered. Do you walk away? Do you take a, a walk down <laughs> in the woods or whatever, or where are you, wherever you're out along the beach? And do, are you able to think, right? And think without, you know, saying, oh my God, I've got to check this, check that, or oh my God, I'm going to, um, you know, uh, I, you have to think about when you when you start to uh, use these, when, when you have the well be, wellness of, of your own being. And the wellness of your own being should be part of this conversation. Uh, I think that's uh, very, very important because. Uh, too often now, now you have uh, groups and organizations that are going, well, we're going to help you find yourself in your wellness and your well-being. You, 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 you've been on this discussion and using this particular device, using this particular technology, just as you have for uh, your iPhone for so many hours and so many minutes. You know, maybe you have to turn that off and have a capability to definitely turn it off. And I think that's the thing is, is knowing how to use the tool uh, for what purpose such that it doesn't overwhelm you. And I think that's um, what we have to be better at and learn learn that capability, in my opinion. Very much so. But it's interesting you talk about the medicine side of things, because I was reading something the other day that was it was referring to basically have it using AI as a crutch, like you like you just said, so that it will it will actually give the patient, certainly in America, uh, worse patient care. Because actually, the, the, the poorer people are going to suffer, is, is what this is what this article was saying. Because actually, it's not fit for purpose yet, and this is the whole point, isn't it? it? It's making something fit for purpose without trying it out on the poor people at the bottom of society who can't perhaps afford to 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 hire a doctor who's actually going to use AI properly in in, in patient diagnosis and this sort of stuff. No, I, I, and so so. You talk. You actually are touching you know, on another topic that is related. And so, so that's one area. What is what could that promise look like for precision medicine? Um, and then, of course, you have the implications of pros and cons of being able to understand that. The other topic is with these technologies, particularly with AI and its uses. Are we creating a digital divide, a north-south divide? Are we creating divide amongst amongst uh, uh, people within our in, within our own society such that they don't they're 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 going to be the underserved, right? And there's underserved, by the way, if you look at underserved, you know, millions of people underserved on the internet. They're not even connected. To them. So, and here, and it's going to get more. And then, of course, let alone what's happening in in our um, in our so-called very mature societies that uh, that are creating these technologies, but creating these technologies without understanding who the underserved, right? The the north south, the you know, the east west. Uh, and so uh, what that means, and so could that mean that we're going to push uh, people more and more um, to be underserved, they can't afford it, they don't know what this is, uh, you know, and they can, nobody should use people as experiments, in my opinion, that's, a, that's, that's clear, I mean, this is quite hopeful, there's part of the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, right? And there should be something, and I think that people have an organization that they're thinking about it, the digital, uh, for some time now, it's like a digital Hippocratic Oath. Do no harm. And AI, do no harm. You have AI for good. You have all of these uh, types of organizations uh, that have been uh, that have been actually growing in, uh, over time. Uh, so you know they look at you know what does it mean, where's the potential for abuse, um, you know, and how and how they use the tool. So here's an example, an analogy. Uh, you have we have the most powerful tools at our hands, but yet when you go learn to drive a car, you have to take a test. <laughs> You have to take a driving test. You have to take a theoretical exam, et cetera. We are not asked to do that, right? To use these, let alone to use tools like we have, just the basic tools like smartphones, for example. Um, and so is any wonder that 
uh, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, and I call those individuals out, do not want their kids to have it until a certain age. Why? They knew. They knew. So, so I think this is kind of the uh, important, uh, this is an important analogy. Um, these are tools. They're really, really, uh, they have a lot of power to them. And of course, if we don't know how to use them responsibility, we can, we can do ourselves damage, let alone others. Yeah, very, very much so. So, so in terms of in terms of all of these AI opportunities out there, I was reading something the other day uh, and listening to a video that, that said that it's the most exciting time to be in technology because there's actually there are actually so many opportunities to fix problems. But do you think do you think that that's true, or or was that twenty years ago when the internet was, or longer when the internet was uh, invented? Um, I think uh, it's a great, um, it can be somewhat true, it depends, I mean the technology companies have been laying people off, so you see a lot of loss of jobs already, right, so on one hand then you see a creation of jobs on, on the other hand, So, but the creation of jobs on the other hand, et cetera, et cetera, the assumption that you have that skill set that they've wanted, right, so what happens to the others who, you know, uh, and whatever excuse the companies use, and you know, don't want to denigrate any of Companies, but the problem, the challenge is, is that people join these groups in good faith and with a skill set that has had been wanted, right, and is no longer wanted. So, um, are we in an AI bubble? Maybe the question, like the internet bubble, right? We could be. Um, uh, it's uh, you know, there's, there's this bubble have we crossed the chasm. Yeah, we've probably brought, been crossing the, the chasm for some time now, and so I think that that's more now. Looking at because it's investors that are looking at how to invest in these types of com companies or these types of technologies, especially uh, you know looking at uh, some aspects of it. But I think what we need to do is take a step back and say, okay, um, it, there is a promise, but there's a promise now on the condition that you have a new, you were able. Again, this goes back to the north, south, east, west divide to pivot to new skills that that no one needed. You know, whether or not you take a, a data science course or whether or not you take something around these uh, learning lang uh, these learning language algorithm courses or whatever, there are courses out there um, to be had. It's a matter of being able to think about how you're going to invest in yourself to do exactly that level and to, of, of, of um, learning and to be able to, to build something, do something with uh, what, you've, what you've learned and to come back uh, to the workforce uh, in a different uh, manner, you know, where, the, where you have that skill set. Now, some people will argue, well, isn't that the job, isn't that the position of the company to a, actually say, look, we're going to invest in you? The answer is no. Um, as much as you want to say companies should invest, in, you know, I know this because I've known this throughout my career, you are responsible for your own career. You're responsible for being able to want to learn or well, whatever. The company not, does not have any responsibility to you in that factor in that matter. So you're able you've got to be able to do that. But that assumes that where you are in these societies, as to the wider conversation, you know, it's not going to take somebody who's homeless, unfortunately, or um, who 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 really wants to be able to participate, uh, would really love to participate uh, in these conversations, but cannot, right? Or be able to be inclusive. So what does inclusion look like? From, from this perspective? What does accessibility look like from this uh, perspective? And I think that's a wider, you know, when we go back to how many millions of people are not connected to the internet component of, which is basic because you need to have this, uh, 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 you know, understanding, then that has, that also has a barrier to, to, to you know, set to success here, whatever success we, we kind of look, look at and however way we, capitalize on success, right? So I think it's, it's important to, to, to note that. And, you know, um, I, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's an exciting time technically. I will say this. I'm, I don't want to, to be dystopian. It's extremely exciting time for me. I'm just, I'm hungry for all of that, right? So I think this is just uh, fantastic to note that. But, you know, it's uh, buyer beware. You know, what kind of products are you going to create? Um, you know, uh, will we get that right? 
um, and, and for whom and, and, and how inclusive are we going to be um, in this particular new world of new worlds that, we are, that, that we're looking at. So it is the exciting part of this, you know, Nathan, Nathaniel, is that it, it's, a, it's a journey, okay? It's not going to take over the world. It's not going to, we're not, we're at a journey right now. Uh, so this is not something that gets out of, out of the scope or hand, but it, it's important to have a certain awareness uh, to it. And I think the aware, there is a promise but the awareness has to be very, very uh, incumbent upon all of us. And, and podcasts like, like the ones that you have here, creating these kinds of uh, conversations that need to happen, are really, really critical to that right. learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, sorry, I just got a question. So, so when it comes to the way that these technologies work, right, AI isn't going to just take over the world because it's mm -hmm. it, 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 it's absolutely segmented each one of these tasks is segmented and it's designed to work in a certain way is that is that correct so so because I've been thinking a lot about this so it's like look so you've got this chat GPT yes you've got a supercomputer behind it and you've got all of this data and you've got all of these words and but that can only be harnessed in the right way if you bolt something else onto it which creates a separate application right so is that is that a, a fair way to sort of look at it that they're segmented into task kind of orientated programs or solutions? well i mean i think that so so yeah you you could say that i mean there's a certain level of segmentation but also i think there's a certain you know there are the use case examples you know Cars, connected cars, travel, tourism, healthcare. We kind of, I mean, that's kind of where I'm, my mind is at, at parsing through your questions. Uh, uh, you know, travel and and so on. I think those are probably a, a, a way to think about it. The the thing that is um, kind of important in this particular space is that. So so that's one side of it, but w where is it grabbing this grabbing these information? This information. So uh, machine learning is probably. Something to think about. It's it's data. <laughs> it's data that you pulsate. It's data that's learned. It's machine learning. It's data. And so, uh, a classic example of somebody who who led their AI group in an automobile organization, basically a couple a couple of years ago, was uh, kind of turning back, saying to you know, we had a discussion, and basically, uh, when he realized um, what would and, and and artificial intelligence, so PhD in this. Space. But what he realized is that the learning, the learning algorithms are, are learning from conversations in the industry or what's out there. So um, if it's negative, positive, what we perceive as negative and what we perceive as positive, and immediately, as it was learning and as learning, and if you put in example, if you put in woman, or if you put was like housewife, or a prostitute or whatever and it was like and it, and that's the conversations that were kind of rightfully or wrong but wrong I mean clearly now I mean it's not clearly but we we can imagine but that's what it was learning right learning learning and so and so how do you how do you kind of this is kind of a fundamental example but how do you actually understand what control is they control what it's learning we don't in the sense, because that's the conversations that are out there. Now, people have the right to have their conversations out there, but could we look at what a positive, uh, negative, again, it's all contextual conversation. Looks like. it's, it's contextual. So there's context to this, right, to this discussion when we're talking about machine learning, when we're talking about AI, and we're talking about the use cases that grow across sort of the, uh, sort of the industry. So in travel, so in travel, the thing is, um, and I want to get into sort of what's kind of embedded here is privacy and trust. So your profile, you know, think about it. You got a loyalty card. Um, maybe you travel often from one location to another, uh, and there's this sort of profiling that's occurring about, and you're served up saying, "Hey, you were here. You want to try this restaurant? You were here." And for you, it's convenience, right? Because it's um, it's convenience. Uh, you try this restaurant, try to go to this place, you, you flew at this a, a location, maybe you want to try this, et cetera, et cetera. 
So, and that's been some time now, right? But then it's like, okay, um, at the, the convenience, because it's removing friction, at what cost? Right, at what cost? Uh, the cost is not, the answer is not to disconnect yourself from the internet completely, but it's to be aware of what you're, what you're, how you're dealing with. You know, especially if you're using conversation with a colleague uh, of mine just yesterday, you know, your Chrome web browser and what you're putting it, the types of things you put in your Chrome web browser, you know, are you aware of that, you know, in terms of privacy, et cetera, and, and well, in dark mode or whatever. It's to be able to use these tools. Why is that important is because there has to be a privacy and trust component of this discussion where you are in the center, not some entity, not some technology in the center, and you're able to be selective about the, its use, right? Uh, because what you don't want to have is sort of uh, something that could be a flip side. And you know I'll come up with always the flip side of this is so a surveillance, if you will, kind of society. Right, a surveillance component. You have created this something that's surveilling you, but at which cost? Uh, and some people will say, well, you know, I never cared about privacy. You do when you when something happens to you, your identity. You do very much care about it. And so it's, again, awareness of that. And it's part of this discussion that we, we need to be cognizant of in terms of, you know, how how these industries can be used to remove the friction. It's convenient for us. But are we aware about how we use these tools to our own um, self values and trust? And trust is, is, is going to be a component of whatever. You know, think about trust. What do you when you think about trust and you think about privacy? What does that mean to you? Well, privacy is like you know, uh, it, it's 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 something that's dear to to your self being, to your own wellness, and trust is. It's got to, it's got to, it's working, but it's going to work until um, it, it serves no damage for me, right? It's, there's, there's that component that has, that is very, very key uh, that has to be sort of, uh, do you embed that in your, in these algorithms? And do you say, okay, this is something that is in, intentionally created for, as I said earlier, for a, for a certain purpose, anything over that um, could be a red flag, could be a red flag, could be a red flag. And, and the, another analogy Nathaniel is that just as you have, say, for people who smoke, a pack of, I don't smoke, but a pack of cigarettes that could cause cancer, but the same thing, could cause. Not to say the whole long list of, of potential abuses, but, you know, we should be aware of that. Right. And then, then it goes back to the whole conversation that we were having, you know, probably five years ago or longer. Who owns your data, right? Like, and, and have you the right to turn around? And say to the search engines, right? I want all my data removed on me, and I and I and I don't want it to be anywhere in anyone's database, and become completely anonymous. Yeah, I mean, and uh, that's a, wow. That's a and it's a it's a huge conversation about who owns your data, right? Um, you know, when you're using some of these tools that basically, you know, whatever your your favorite tool is, um, some way you serve up your data, right? And so, but. Um, I would say philosophically, uh, you own your data. You know, you own your data. But uh, to 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 think about how you scrape. So you know, just on digital identity, digital justice. Um, you know, if you end up in, in a site that's undesirable, how do you scrape that, right? So how do you go back? And it's a very difficult thing. It's very difficult, 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 difficult. Especially you know, so the, there's there's a lot of miscreants people out there, right? Um, and so, um, and that's the thing that just as we have misread people in our society, the first uh, users, the misread users of, the, of these types of tools are the very ones you're trying to protect yourself. They're the first adopters, in fact. Uh, and so, um, and I think that's, a, that's the polarity in this di discussion that we have to be sort of cognizant of. I mean, it's as we said, the new world for us, um, there are, there are Certainly uh, benefits in terms of you know learning new um, skill sets, etc. There's certainly um, um, cons in terms of you know the potential for misuse, uh, and and there is a, a large potential for that. Uh, and um, then of course uh, widening this digital divide between haves and have-nots, uh, 
you know, country level, uh, societal level, uh, where uh, people no longer will be uh, uh, be beneficiaries, and that that's a challenge that we have in our society. You know, yeah. you and I are having this conversation, but you know, think about somebody who's not able to have this conversation, who could have this conversation, but uh, we're not, uh, you know, is not included. So the inclusion component is 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 is, is lacking, in my opinion. That's that's a very very good point, actually, very good point. So I mean I think it's something like forty nine percent of the population of the world isn't on the internet. That's that's what I heard last uh, last time I spoke to someone about this. I did a bit of research, but in terms of kind of what amazes you the most around AI and 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 this new kind of wave of of amazing technologies. I mean, I'm really interested in the health kind of side of things, as as I know you are, yeah. and and the way that images can be analysed uh, and sorted through with with these algorithms to indicate types of uh, cancer within, you know, even from people's smartphone cameras. I believe that there there there's a whole new wave of kind of uh, analysis for uh, these sorts of challenges for people. So the way medicine is kind of moving, that excites me. Uh, what, 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 what excites you about, I, about AI right now? I, I have to say, um, I, I, I like when it comes to medicine, right? I mean, that's why I touched on healthcare at the beginning. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to sort of make a sort of personalize, personalize the, the experience. My, my mother passed away with breast cancer and, you know, uh, my aunt did, and uh, her sister, and so you kind of look at this. Uh, you, you you look at that experience and say, well, could it's something? Could we have thought about finding these tumors or the propensity? Uh, no, DNA is a very heavy topic here today. So we have to, this is a different kind of component, but that's a conversation. But could we have actually used better better imaging? Could we have actually used better um, uh, predictability here? Uh, with the with a, a tool set like AI, right? So with what predictive is, right? And I'll put predictive in quotes. Uh, and would that be uh, would that have been a better outcome, let's say, for my mother and my aunt? Uh, the answer is I don't know. But target medicine, targeted medicine, predictive me predictive medicine is is I think promise here. Again, on the condition that we'll have, uh, you know, where the the patient has to be involved, right, in this conversation. I am I'm certainly you know. Uh, even if I put myself in the patient's uh, shoes, involved in these conversations, it's because physicians are not—they um, don't know everything, right? And they—they're trying to learn. They're by themselves are trying to learn to keep keep up with these types of technologies, in, in some cases. And so, uh, but with the, but so I think that's kind of the promises of, promise of that uh, in terms of predictive physician uh, medicine, uh, and then of course the decision is always going to be left up to you. This is important. Not the doctor, but you, right? So here's the the component of who you are, Nathaniel. Here's the component of what we found about you. Um, you know, uh, this is and 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 that's that's what I think is going to be quite interesting. The other thing I will say here is, on the condition, <laughs> no, put my on the condition. You know where that data is going. You know. It has to be, if it's transparent, like, it has to be transparently, you're selectively part of that conversation of where it's going, how transparent that, uh, that sharing is, you know, is it your, your, you know, your insurance provider will want to be part of that um, discussion, you know, who else, right? So that's what you're finding is physicians are kind of opening up to these kind of very, very uh, proprietary meta portals. Um, here it is. Uh, you can upload. It, 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 it's, it's kind of rudimentary, by, by the way. But again, it's all. But being able to use these kind of tools in a way that's responsible, such that uh, you know, if your premium is going up, why is your premium going up? You know, is it because of the findings here, or what? You know, is it how is that how is that part of the conversation? Um, uh, and and again, being able to be selective about that sharing is. I don't think we're quite there yet. But I think that's an important component of that conversation. I think the other uh, part too is I know uh, speaking to people who really need to have access to big data for genom genomics. 
Um, that's a really, you know, genomics is <laughs> hDNA is very special. And researchers really, 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 really want to have access to that data. But at which price, right? Um, you know, and again, to the previous conversation, so accessibility and precision medicine and responsible use, um, such that it's not going to um, go out, it was, you know, irresponsibly, that I, I mean, without your Nathaniel's control, let's say, uh, to say, well, Nathaniel has a certain DNA and it's, um, you know, it's in, the, in sort of the genomic category and, uh, you know, this is what, what is predicted about him and his family and so on and so forth. So there's a promise. We're at we're at new front. We've been along this journey. We're at new frontiers in this journey. Uh, it's getting better and better and better. It pressures puts pressures on physicians, however, because they have to have a as I said before, a common understanding of these technologies and how to use them uh, and um, and use them authoritatively. You know, uh, with with a partnership with um, other with patients in mind. The other component, um, before I go back to you, is um, I think, um, again, tendentially related, is um, how to use these technologies to train healthcare prov providers and retain them. You know, uh, so top of mind is metaverse, and okay, there's AI involved in that discussion. I, I think the, you know, you, you, there are uh, schools uh, in New York that are nursing schools that are nursing, for example, I have an example of this. Are we using these technologies for some time to do that? Uh, why? And of course, with patient in mind, and patient uh, part of that whole process, they are there's a there's this sort of imaging, 3D kind of imaging that they they are part of that. Um, it's not only it's not just the cool use of a tool. It's actually being able to 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 see clearly to see something other than taking somebody's vitals, but to see it in a third dimension at the same time. And so, um, and and that is becoming very, very interesting. This is on a. This has been going on for the past several years now, and I think, uh, and you see that I, I quoted the United States, but you see it also in Asia. So I think this is something that I think we have uh, the promise for is retaining, educating uh, new healthcare professionals uh, with these kinds of tools, and of course, it will be sort of what is responsive responsibility look like as we're in new frontiers of it. So exciting. It is, it is. I know there's a there's a there's a chap in uh, Manchester who's doing a lot with uh, limb amputation reduction. Yes. Uh, which is which is uh, something to do with Oracle's uh, um, image recognition analysis kind of product that they built with him, I think. And that's particularly interesting. I'm I'm um, I'm quite amazed, actually, at how that's working, and that could, that has the potential to roll out, you know, globally, doesn't it, for all sorts of different diseases, and and it will um, it will help a lot of people, I think, uh, just that prim primary sort of source of uh, technology, you know, which is sure. uh, which is which is really interesting. So, what really excites you then about uh, your life right now? And what you're kind of working on over the next uh, in the next year, two years, and, and moving moving forwards. Yeah, I, I'm um, well. First of all, I'm excited about being grounded. I think that's more important now than ever is grounding. And so, you know, you're talking about this balance between well wellness and well being. I think this is the exciting part. Um, I'm very, and this is really important. I, I don't say that tongue in cheek. I have recently been accepted to um, on a PhD program to <laughs> take me three years of cyber psychology. That's exciting. Oh, now that I'm interested in that. And so that's, yeah. that's cyber psychology. It'll take me three years, and it's for the Capital Technology University um, in, out of Maryland. Uh, but the, the creator of that is Dr. Mary Aiken, who's um, of, of the discipline itself, um, who is based in Dublin, Ireland, and you know the chair is also in the, in London. So, uh, and it's for people who who kind of working and like want to new, learn something new. Now, cyber psychology has a big build part of it because it's also uh, built into cyber security. So, cyber security is very important. So, that's an example of wanting to learn something new. Um, so, that's what's going to keep me uh, excited. Uh, and also, 
You know, I have to say the, these new frontiers, you know, I call them new frontiers, um, being able to think about new ways to remove friction in terms of syntax, uh, new ways in terms of uh, looking at um, how we think about digitalized assets, how people become really responsible with banks, as you well know, the CB, um, Credit Suisse and UBS kind of debacle. Now you have, now people are very much looking at, oh my goodness, I want to, I want to think about um, being able to have alternatives, and what does that mean? So stable coins <laughs> are are really important. Uh, you know, how do you use that to actually uh, create new infrastructures and uh, in this space? So I'm, uh, you know, those are the big buckets, and of course, uh, common to that is the ethic component of what I'm doing in the IEEE. Fantastic. And what do you? So what are you doing at IEEE? You're guiding them on ethics what? in there, or? No, I'm I, I'm actually chairing two groups. I'm chairing, um, um, you know, this came out in an industry uh, industry connections group um, that I uh, had led and now it's led by a colleague, uh, colleagues of mine, um, and for standardization. So it's um, ethics in um, extended reality. I am, so I'm a chair, and now I'm a chair of ethics in um, metaverse systems. Right. Ooh. So 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 that. Um, and, and my meeting that's going to come up in about five or six minutes uh, is going to be another meeting in that for for uh, the yeah, vice chair position. So, and, and so so and, and that is look, this has come up for the IEEE component of ethics and work spawned in 2016 in The Hague when we a group of uh, people from organizations and companies came together. And talked about what does ethics and autonomous systems look like, and how can we progress along the journey of what we create these these dialogues. And from that, it's been a journey, right? So, and, and as I said, we're on a journey in this particular space. And in what I'm doing with the IEEE, these, these chair positions, is looking at uh, working with groups of uh, colleagues from various backgrounds, you know, ethicists and uh, transhumanists, and you know, academics, and and, and so on. To create uh, standards that we can actually adopt. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. Well, thank and you. And I think you're Sorry. welcome. You're welcome. No, no, and no. I was going to say, and and what's important for organizations and companies to uh, actually adopt. So. Well, thank you. That's that's been a very interesting conversation. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to speaking with you soon. I'm just going to push the uh, the outro. Thanks very much for listening to Influential Visions. Please make sure you share this episode with your friends and business connections. And don't forget to drop us a review wherever you listen. Thanks.